Hello. I'm joined today by Yan Zhao, a lecturer in Chinese language and culture at the University of Southern Queensland. In this module, called A Sense of Place, we'll be focusing on countries that comprise the Asia-Pacific region and we'll be examining the cultures, uh, the histories and also those geographic locations to have a better understanding of the Asia-Pacific region. Now, Yan, your expertise is in Chinese language and culture, as well as Chinese history and social movements, uh, particularly in contemporary China. Now, yes. given that China is often called a rising power, and, that it, and it's predicted that it will play a really important role in the 21st century, mm -hmm. how important do you think it is to have an understanding of China? Well, I think it's a very important Anna, for our students to have an adequate understanding of China. Um, the fact is, you know, China being the rising power in the international community and its important role in the 21st century is really almost a matter of reality than uh, prediction. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, if we don't go, we don't have to go into those statistics or uh, figures indicating China's economic achievements, um, but everyone is aware mm -hmm. that uh, the figures or the statistics are nothing short of staggering. That's right, yeah. and certainly over the last decade as well, we've seen some really staggering growth in That's the Chinese right. economy. E especially if you uh, look at them against the, the background, such as the the. Tiananmen massacre of uh, thousands of pro-democracy students in 1989, mm -hmm. the 10-year massive destruction caused by the Cultural Revolution from 1966 to 1976, yes. you know the the disastrous policy in the late 50s um, during the Great Leap Forward mm -hmm. period, which resulted in uh, the death of tens of millions of Chinese people yes. from starvation yes. and the years of civil war between the Communist Party and the national government. And, you know, after the eight years of hard struggle mm -hmm. against Japanese invasion, preceding the, you know, uh, the, the century of humiliation at hands of European and American power. So, yes. you know, China is indeed um, a, a rising power mm. so and it really will definitely that... play a significant role in the, in the coming century. Yes. yes. So they've really had that turbulent history. So this dramatic rise in power that we've seen yes. in terms of economic power and also political power in terms of playing a role on the world stage is really quite phenomenal yes. when we think about that turbulent past that China has had very recently. That's right. And our students will be looking at um, the experiences of colonisation by a number of countries within the Asia-Pacific region. I'm sure China will be one country that uh, students will be able to look at as well because it really was a humiliating experience for the Chinese it to is. be a colony of Europe. And of course Shanghai was called the playground of <laughs> the <right>. Europeans. So <laughs> yeah. that in itself was really quite a uh, difficult time for the Chinese. It is. But, you know, um, China is really uh, playing a significant role mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in international politics, for example. You know, China is one of the five uh, veto-holding members yes. of the UN Security Council. That's right. And also, you know, traditionally, if you like look at the history, traditionally, uh, Britain and France, uh, you know, allied to the US. Yes. And also, I think the... Mm, the, rush, the, the role Russia plays is significantly weaker yes. in comparison and after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Yes. So China, in a way, has become some sort of an independent center of power mm -hmm. and taking decisions, you know, making decisions um, on the basis of, you know, very often different and sometimes probably opposite right. uh, criteria to that of other members. So I think, you know, this is quite interesting thing to see. Uh, and China's policy, um, at least, you know, in, 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 in dealing with uh, North Korea, for example, and Iran, uh, are quite different from That's the right. other members of the of the Security uh, Council. Yes. And it's quite, it would be very interesting to see what is going to unfold in that respect. That's and right. regionally, uh, you know, China is... Uh, are probably the most powerful in the 
Asia Pacific region mm -hmm. in terms of economic achievements and uh, military might. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we know, China has become like number one trading partner of Australia yes. <laughs> and has got a um, <coughs> multi tiered relationship. There's a multi tiered relationship mm -hmm. uh, relations or be between you know, China and Australia, between mm -hmm. Australia and China. And, you know, in, in a variety of um, <coughs> sort of areas. Yes, that's right. So it's definitely a country to watch as its development increases. So for our students, how important do you think it is for students to have language acquisition to really fully understand a country, its culture and its people? Well, Anna, <laughs> you know, language is really an integral part of the culture of, of a nation. It is part of the life of people, it's part of the, the society. So if you really want to have a deep understanding um, or adequate understanding about the country, you've got to really learn how to speak the language. Because you need to engage with people, you need to communicate with people. You cannot just uh, acquire knowledge from reading books, which sometimes are often written with a very subjective point of view. You've got to really uh, uh, communicate pe with people. I think, you know, Australia um, is geogra geographically in, 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 in sort of the Asia Pacific region. And it's so important for our students to, uh, to learn an Asian language, mm -hmm. in particular, you know, Chinese. Because I really think, I really believe we need to equip our Australian youth with the knowledge and skills so that they could engage, they could communicate, they could function, and they could succeed, and they could help make change for the better in our region and probably international, in the international um, scene. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much for talking to us today, Jan, and I'm sure many other students worldwide who might be taking this course can also see the importance then of learning uh, a second language and really, you know, with China being a rising power, the Chinese language would be a good place to start. So you might see some students enrolling in your Chinese language and culture, Jan, that yeah, would be I wonderful. Do, I, I do hope so, yes. I do hope so. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.